All right, unboxing time again. Because, well, I actually quite like making these. Today we're doing this. Right, so this is, well, it's obvious really, it's a phone holder. Specifically a Streetwise phone holder. Streetwise, wise with a Z, so you know it's it's definitely got street smarts or something. Anywho, um, so yeah, so it's here, suitable for most mobile phones and sat-nav units from 40mm to 100mm wide. Now, I haven't actually measured my phone, but it's just normal phone shape, so I'm hoping that's going to be enough. We'll find out in a minute, I suppose. Quick release arms with soft grip foam pads. Fairly, fairly straightforward. On this side it says holder rotates through 360 degrees, making it ideal for sat nav units. Yeah, additional built in photo frame in the back of the unit. Okay, which I suppose is probably that thing there shown in you. I'm guessing you will find out in a minute. And that's just information sales at streetwiseaccessories.com. Yada yada yada. Yeah, and you're advised to visit their website. I didn't actually buy this from their website. I bought this from Thingamabobs in Ely. Anyone out there that doesn't know, Thingamabobs is an interesting shop. It just seems to sell a random selection of things. You know, there's everything from tools, little hand tools. You can get food products in there that you don't often see elsewhere. Um, a lot of strange canned goods. You can get gardening equipment, cleaning products, pet stuff, furniture. They're typically very small shops. This one was was very small indeed. Think you're sort of corner shop size, but with the upstairs converted to about the same size again. Very small shop, but they just cram lots of products in there. I like going there. You can always find something interesting there, and it's always dirt cheap as well. This was in their motoring section. Which I didn't know this store had. I know that thing in the bobs, and there's another one called I think Bits and Bobs. They're the same chain. They just occasionally change the name up. Um, yeah, I didn't know this particular store had a motoring section, but it does now. So yeah, I ended up looking at that, and I saw this. I've been looking for a phone cradle for the car for a while now. Partly because I occasionally use my phone as a sat-nav, and partly because, you know, I want to record my trips every now and then. I saw this, it was all of £3, and it looks vaguely familiar. I'm sure I've seen lots of people using these before, particularly taxi drivers. And I figure if they're using them all day every day, it must be up to the job. So I thought we'd give it a go, it's only three quid. So, let's open it up and see what we get. That's what's in the box. There's no instructions for us to ignore, which is good. The box looks like it's flat, so that can go straight in the recycling bin. Good. I do like packaging that can be recycled. Let's have a look in here. Plastic bag, get a shut of that as well. Right, so that's the cradle, and then that's obviously the suction cup mount that's all right that's flexible but you do need two hands to bend it out but at least i know it's not going to move yeah if you're going along in the car that's not going to be jiggling around so that's a good thing all right okay oh shit the bed i thought that was going to be spring loaded all right oh that's oh dear me Right, let's see if we can't. Uh. Okay, I thought that was going to be spring loaded, but it turns out it's not. How do I get that back in there now? Oh, bloody hell. I think I might have fucked it already. Whoops. Do I pull that out? Or do I press? Oh, that appears to press inwards. Oh, there we go, we'll just push that in like that. Probably not how it's supposed to work. Ah, that's how it's supposed to work. Right, I see. Ah, 
you don't wrench it apart. It works better, Stuart. Right, okay, I see now. Right, so these are nice soft foam pads. Well, that one's been made thicker to stop it from, I don't know, falling out. Oh, that's not good. They're quite easily peeled off. Hmm. Well, that one's okay. That one's peeling off already, mind. Yeah, I'll have to get some glue on that. All right. And then it looks like you press this button in here. And it pops out. Look at that. That's plenty big enough for my phone. I wanted to have it landscape. Oh, the camera's going to be on the corner here. Because then I can make landscape video, obviously. And you press it in and that allows you to squeeze it back together. Interesting way of doing that. I thought it was going to be spring tension, so it's constantly squeezing. But it's not. You press it in and it extends all the way out. I suppose the idea is that you press that in, slot your phone in, and then you squeeze it down and let go. That's probably an easier way of doing it, I suppose, but okay. Right. Leave that as is then. Interestingly, that bit that I just wrenched down doesn't feel like it's sat in properly now. I probably pulled it out of its mounting. Never mind, it looks like it still does the job. These bottom bits here, they're not adjustable. Okay. How do we get into the photo frame? It says I can change the picture in here. I mean, I don't, I don't see the need to. If I'm going to put my phone in it, then I'm not going to be able to see that. But if I can, I'm going to. I've seen some... And people driving around it and have a picture of a, I don't know, some anime or Japanese schoolgirl in it. And I thought, where the fuck did you buy that? Because how do we get this picture out? That's the question. I think it's going to have to be a screwdriver job. Ah. Let's see what we can do. I mean, do I just, do I have to prise it there, perhaps? No. Cracking the plastic. Yeah, it's just cracked the plastic. Well, no wonder they leave the fucking Japanese schoolgirl in there. They probably can't figure out how to get it out. Never mind. Right, let's figure out what this does then. So, that's a bit of a fun handle. So, do I. Ah. That is, can be rotated like that, I see. And do I... That locks it, that little tab there. Okay. And then that allows you to rotate that. Okay, so that's how it's adjustable and lockable. So, so far, apart from being a bit counterintuitive to work and use, I'm actually... Um, yeah, reasonably impressed with this. Yeah. All the fault with it so far has been induced by me. So, let's hook that in there. There we go. Fits in nice and firmly. That ain't coming out easily anyway. So, yeah, just Locate okay. those four lugs into those four holes, push it up, and it snaps shut. And then I suppose you mount that bit to the dashboard, and then you can rotate that as you like. You adjust it, and you can lock it with that little tab there. won't move yeah so that's to be fair there's a bit of flex in it but if you're going along 
that's not going to budge. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then it looks like this bit here has another little thing. All right, yeah, you pull that little tab back and you can adjust this. So no, that's not the adjustment, that's for the, right, okay. So, sorry, I thought that was adjustment, it's not adjustment. That's how you operate the suction cup, so you would wet it or lick it on here, press it up into the window, and then you press that forward, like that. And what it does is it pulls the suction cup back, so it creates a vacuum in there, and that will hold it onto well, you're going to put it on the windscreen, let's be honest. You're not putting it anywhere else. Shove it up your ass. And then, of course, it's adjustable that way. This is feeling like a decent bit of kit, actually. I'm going to take it out to the car, give it a try, try and mount it in the... Well, stick it in the Peugeot. That's my day-to-day -day car. But I'll probably use this in all the cars. But for three quid, so far, I'm reasonably impressed. The only real quality issue has been, I can't figure out how to get this fucking photo frame open. I don't think it actually comes open, I think that's just a picture <laughs> to make it look nice. So, yeah, and of course this foam pad pulling off, but that's that's not a big problem, I can just glue that. The only other problems with it have been caused by me not knowing how to work it. Let's, let's try a phone in it quickly. Right, so this is a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. I use this as one of my um, cameras when I'm doing shoots indoors. I don't generally take it out anywhere with me because the battery doesn't last very long on it. It's pretty fecked. I mean, it's dropped from 100% to 72% in the time I've been recording this video. We've been at it 10 minutes. So, yeah, it generally doesn't leave the uh, the little studio that I've got made up here. But let's just see what we can do with it. So, squeeze that and you press that in there. Okay. So, if I position it on the foam pads properly. Ah, there we go. And you squeeze it in tight. Okay. See, I can pull that out, but it's not going to fall out. See, I'll just make sure I've got it on the pads properly. There we go. Alright. Well, it's not going anywhere. See, I've squeezed it down to the point where I'm actually bending the little arms slightly. But, I mean, that's not going to... It's not going to move. That's up there like that. Yeah. That's not going anywhere. I mean, if I get hold of it... I can't... Well, that, yeah, actually, now that I've got it on the pads, that's not coming out. I could wrench it out, but that is very firmly held in there. Okay. And then to release it, all you do is you press this button. And it drops it straight out. And then I suppose, yeah, when you're getting in the car, you've got to make sure it's on the little friction pads. Fetch it now. There we go. Yeah, you've got to make sure it's on the little friction pads as you mount it, but if you squeeze it in properly, it's not going to move. I can see why I see so many taxi drivers using this. They normally have it plugged in as well into the charger, using it as a sat nav and such like. I can see you could quite easily drive around all day every day with that and that would not move. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Right. Press stop on that. Don't know why I left that recording. No one wants to see that. 
All right, let's go and mount it in the car. We'll go for a quick drive and we'll see what it looks like. All right, well, one thing I've just realized, can it handle the phone being in a case? So this is my Google Pixel 5 phone, which I use for, well, I use for all my filming. I use it either here in the studio where we are now, or if I'm out and about, I'll generally use it. Sometimes I use my big camera, but generally speaking, I use this because the quality of the recording is excellent. But it does have this wallet case on it, which is great if it's in my pocket. But the question is, can I then just put it straight into this? So let's find out, shall we? I mean, it's in. It's holding it pretty firmly. I mean, I've got that flapping around. I suppose no, I can't put it the other way up, because then I can't see. Yeah, okay. That'd be alright for filming, I suppose, if I'm recording my journey. Yeah, I mean, that's probably going to get in the way, but that's not the cradle's fault, that's just the case I'm using. Let's try it another way around. I could put it that way, but the problem then is, when I put it in here, as you can see on screen, it's going to obscure the camera. So it's got to be that way. Hmm. It holds it, that's the main thing. I'm not going to use the phone as I'm driving along because that's both illegal and dangerous. So, yeah. I'm only really going to use it for filming and or as a sat nav. So, yeah. Alright, that'll do. I'll stop that. Let's go give it a go in the car. Right, so we are here in the Peugeot. And we're going to attempt to mount this. I think we're going to put it... Hmm... It's going to cover the dashboard. Oh, the map. Okay, why can't we put this then? So we'll, we'll put it there, shall we? Yeah. Unless I can sort of bend this up. Let's see. Oh, that's certainly quite stiff. Giggity. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Oh, we'll try it there. Yeah, we'll angle it so that... No. Yeah, all right, we'll try that, shall we? Let's try it there. Okay. Yeah, I think I might just have broke that. Let's just have a quick look. Seems okay. Thought I felt like break. That goes up on there. Like that. See, that's a little insecure for my liking. Hmm. I mean, it's not going to come off, but. So we're going to go. I need to go up the petrol station to, well, buy some petrol, actually. What we're going to do is we're going to film a, a section of the trip on my backup phone. I did think about trying to demonstrate a phone call using this, but it wouldn't really work because A, there's no SIM card in this. And if I use my daily phone, it's actually already hooked up to the Bluetooth in the car. So it somewhat renders this pointless. But... What I will do instead is we'll record a section of the journey on this and we'll be able to watch it back in a second and that will show us how much it vibrates, if there's any noise being transmitted through it, you know, the vibration of the car could be transmitted down this arm. Um, and also we'll see if it falls off on the way, so we're going to go down, it's 60 mile an hour the whole way to the petrol station, um, it gets quite bumpy, there's a roundabout that's very bumpy. Um, and there's a few twists and turns, so we'll put this through its paces. Now, the angle on that is catching the dashboard. I haven't really positioned this very well. I should have put it somewhere else, but this is just a test, so that'll do for now. So we'll set that recording. 
There we go. We'll drive up the petrol station, blow my life savings on some petrol, and we'll come back and we'll have a look at what the uh, at what the footage is like. <laughs> Turn the music off because copyright trolls will come. This is annoying me, it's wobbling just going down this road. Uh, also, yeah, I'm going to reposition it after all and see if we can get a better shot of the road. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Alright, let's give it a go then. I've moved the camera up under basically the rear view mirror, it's directly under it now. So one thing I'm noticing now is I commented on the size of it. It's proven to be a bit of a drawback in my car because it, it just makes the whole setup quite large. It's difficult to find somewhere to put it on the windscreen where it isn't obstructing your view. I mean, at the moment, it's it's okay. It's directly below the rear view mirror, so it's not really obstructing anything that wouldn't that wouldn't be obstructed anyway by the by the mirror. But as you've probably seen, the top corner, I'm catching the bracket in shots. Again, to adjust it out, it's sort of. Yeah, I'm struggling to position it in a way that it doesn't cause an obstruction. This is for filming purposes, obviously. Let's build it up to 60 down here. still bouncing around somewhat as we go over these bumps. And what is this? Big and orange and flashing lights. Oh, oh whack. Mm. Oh, we've got to go. We're saying go. Don't often see that. I wonder what they're doing. Cheers, guys. Ah, they're filling in the potholes. Ah, it's good to see there's been some nasty ass potholes right on that corner. You've got to slow right down and coming the other way. A machine actually for filling them in. I've heard of those. Apparently, they can fill a pothole in in seconds. It sort of heats the tarmac up and sprays it on. And then, all they do is just beat it down into the hole, and that's it, it's job done. to last a lot longer than when they come out and fix them by hand. Fair play. I imagine it's quite an expensive bit of kit, but then uh, over time, if it's working all day every day, which it will be doing out here, the roads are terrible. If you think about the man hours that are saved, yeah, it probably just work out better. And we get nicer roads for it, so yeah, quite nice to see that. Anyway, back to the actual product. So I'll be driving along here, now the image stabilisation on the phone is probably doing, taking most of it out, but it is moving around a fair bit, it's secure enough, there is a bit of wobble to it, and that's coming from the where the little bracket meets with the suction cup on the window, it's almost like it's not pulling it quite tight enough, so there's still a bit of play in it. Now when I first tried to position it, when I tightened it, there was a big crack. I wonder if perhaps I've broken or dislodged something. I mean, I didn't do anything that you're not supposed to do, 
so if anything it's, it's not a user area, it's an error, I'd call that a quality error. Uh, yeah, it's certainly not coming off though, it's very firmly attached to the windscreen. But I would say if you're looking to use this to mount um, a phone for use as a dash cam, it's probably not ideal. The, the length of the arm on it, the size of the whole thing, isn't helping. If that arm was half the size, we wouldn't be getting nearly as much wobble. stations for fuel but um, I'm only filling up two jerry cans one for the lawnmower one for a project car so hopefully it won't completely break the bank all right let's fill her up and then we'll go home all right let's go home I've just bought 11.73 liters of petrol the cheap stuff apparently for £20.52 Thanks Boris Oh so the guy in front was just about done fueling As I started fueling He's not in the shop because there was no one in the shop So where the fuck is he gone? Which happens out here, this is 
this area, the fennel, is known as the breadbasket of Britain. Massive, massive farming operation around here. So there is, there's hundreds of tractors out here. They go to and fro day and night, all year round. It's just a fact of life. And there's no point getting angry or impatient with them. I mean, they're putting, they're putting food on your table. And a lot of people just assume that you know, the tractors go to and fro, and that for the people behind them, it's just a job. And well, to some extent, that might be true. It's very corporate, it's the farming out here. It's not your traditional family run. So the guy behind the wheel of that thing, it probably is just a job to him. He's probably not invested in the farm at all. But it is still more than that. Farming in Britain, it, it does make a difference. If it ended, we'd have to import all our food. I think a lot of people assume that we already do that, and the truth is we don't. Britain is a very green country. My partner comes from the state of New Mexico and good US of A. Don't grow up there. I mean, they cook a lot of meth. Um, but they don't grow anything there. So, yeah, without farming, we're not like that, where everything has to be brought in. It's imported, I mean, yes, it's imported from other bits of the United States, but you're still talking hundreds, even thousands of miles. I'm talking, they have very little native food production. It's not a good place to be. Oh, he's going a different way. Never mind, there might be another. I was looking for the opportunity to overtake. Of course, that involves revving the good old diesel engine. And we'll see how that noise is transmitted through to the phone or the camera. Never mind. So I can just do it around here actually, can't we? I've booked it a bit. Top tip when you're filling um, jerry cans, when you put them on the ground, because you, know, you hold them up, you're more likely to spill stuff, so you put them on the ground so they're nice and stable. When you bend down with the hose, the nozzle, the, I don't know, the thing, um, there's likely going to be a bit of fuel that drops out. So try and get that in the jerry can because that's, that's like. You know, a little bit of free petrol. The person before you paid for that, and it's just a little bit that's stuck in the end of the nozzle. That's the word nozzle. What you don't want to do though is spill it all over the side of your jerry can because see, I'm driving home now and it fucking reeks of petrol. I would open the window, but that would ruin the test of this little car mount. So, yeah, that's the thing. I suppose the thing to do would be to stand up with the jerry can in your hand get the nozzle in it and then put them both down on the ground together and then you know that petrol is going in. You know, a free little bit of petrol. And then when you are filling, obviously, go slow. Because you're putting petrol in, air's got to escape. And if you're pumping it ten to the dozen, like you're filling up your car, it's just going to spray back at you and make a mess. And then you're wasting that precious petrol. And you don't have to put the nozzle all the way in. Giggity. Giggity, 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 giggity. Just the tip. Giggity. Giggity, Otherwise it'll just click off thinking that it's full. Yeah, there's a full all of this in. It's still bumpy, but it's not going to rip your tyres off. Driving off with the phone box now. Yonk. What a bit of adverse camber. I've seen many a car end up in ditches around that. Just 
catch you out if you don't know it. Oh, dearie me, fuel level too low. I was just fucking there. Fuck. Never mind. Go and get some later. Look at that massive bit of kit in the field. All folding up on itself. Like Optimus Prime retired and just decided to get himself a farm. So, recap, hasn't gone anywhere, it's still pretty firmly mounted, but it does wobble, you can see, as you're going along, um, it does sway from side to side a bit as you go around corners, so I'm going to say, turn the engine off, save that precious diesel, I'm going to say, yeah, it's good for, it's a good mount, I don't regret buying it, for use as a dash cam, I'm going to say it will do the job, but there are probably better things out there, smaller ones that can be put away, um, and you know, won't shake as much, um, but if you just want it so that you, um, I mean I see taxi drivers with these a lot, and they'll put it you know, down in the corner of their windscreen tucked away, and it will have the software on that their company's using um, and they can also use it as a sat nav as well it's good for that um so i'd say it's good for using you know for mounting a phone and using a phone as a phone but i think for dash cam use perhaps not so i'm going to go inside we'll upload this footage to my laptop and we'll have a review and we'll see what the sound is like because if the sound is good on this recording then it's probably safe to say that it's going to be good if you, say, take a phone call with it, which is its primary purpose, really. It's meant to be a, you know, like a, a well, it's not really a hands-free kit, but you could use your phone hands-free with it in this mount. So, let's go inside and do that. All right, so that's the end of the footage. I did think about bringing it inside and you know, filming the last bit, talking about it to summarise, but... There's not really anything to be gained from doing that, so we'll do this last bit as a voiceover only. Uh, overall, I'm quite happy with it. Um, if I'd paid more money for it, I might be a bit more disappointed, but its price range saves it in this instance. Three quid, you can't complain really. You'll struggle to find another mount cheaper. For use as a dash cam, having seen the footage back now, I know I was complaining of it a lot when I was driving, but having seen it back now, it's okay actually. Um, you know, it's not shaking so much that they, that you can't see what's going on. So if you were going to use your use it to hold a dash cam or hold your phone and use that as a dash cam, that would be perfectly acceptable. Modern smartphones have pretty good image stabilization on them as well, so any vibration that's been transmitted is going to be mitigated or you know, maybe even eliminated few quality issues with it i still haven't managed to get the picture frame section open it's not an issue it's just that it calls it a picture frame it's not much of a picture frame if you can't open it and change the picture but there you go i mean the the vibration whilst you're going along is the is the biggest drawback of it it's very secure i tried wrenching it off the windscreen without undoing it properly it ain't budging that's that's for sure um, so yeah, and it certainly holds on to whatever you put into it really quite well too, so that's a good point to it. The vibration, uh, if you were, say, trying to look at a sat-nav and it's jiggling around, that might be a bit of an issue, but again, you shouldn't be staring at your phone that much, you should have your eyes on the road. Um, <laughs> sat-navs give, uh, you know, they, they give audio, or audio, uh, they give audible instructions as well <laughs> as having a, a map on the screen. Um, really, you should just be listening to that. That's what I do. I hardly ever look at my sat nav when I'm using it. I listen to what it tells me and I do it. So, so yeah. Overall, I'm going to say it's a good product. I'm glad I bought it. I th that's that's sort of the benchmark for me. If I regret buying something, then yeah, then it's not not good. But yeah, if I'm glad I bought something, then it's a pass from me. Um, would I recommend it? Yeah, sure, I'd recommend it. Of course I would. You know, it, despite my complaining about it, it does the job it was meant to do, and you can't really ask any more of that. I mean, if you wanted to stop it jiggling around, you could just rest it on something. What I've seen a lot of um, 
drivers do if they're not using it as a dash cam if it's a sat nav or just as a phone or whatever they'll have it suckered onto the windscreen but then have the phone itself actually resting on the dashboard it's tucked well out of the way when you do that and it's you know it's going to move less because it's sort of it's got a second thing to rest on but you don't need to do that the main thing is the size of it you've got to be careful where you put it and make sure that you mount it correctly or, or it's going to start obstructing your vision it's either got to be very low down on the windscreen um, probably resting on the uh, the dashboard or you've got to put it up high and try and get it up behind say the rear view mirror um, if you just stick it anywhere it's going to stick out quite a bit in my case it would either obscure a big section of the windscreen in front of me or if I moved it down it would then obscure the dashboard it, yeah the size of it is it, it's not a problem but it's something to be aware of now if you were using this like a van massive windscreen big dashboard it's all quite far away from you not an issue at all if anything the size is going to be is going to be to its advantage it'll help bring things a bit closer to you so you're not having to reach over to them but in a normal car like i've got yeah you're going to want to bend that arm in on itself just to shrink it down a bit so yeah we'll leave that there good product highly recommend it like i said i bought this from thingamabobs but i do see the the streetwise brand um, around um, I bought something from Euro Car Parts the other day that was um, also streetwise. So, yeah, it can be found anywhere. So, yeah, thank you for watching.